Hi there. Welcome to this uh, introduction video of the mission object-oriented scripting environment for DCS World. I'm going to explain you in this very short video the value proposition, why I suggest you start using this framework to develop your missions. And I will not take more than five minutes of your time. So bear with me. You may have designed using the mission editor of DCS already a couple of missions, but you may have found that the mission editor uh, provides limited functionality. Um, once you get a bit accustomed with mission editing, you want to do more things, and the mission editor just simply prevents you from doing that. When you have a problem, it's very difficult to identify that problem. Um, I have spent personally myself searching for hours finding a problems that I just could not find. Um, so it's hard to follow the workflow when you use the mission editor uh, functionality because logic is spread out over your mission um, because you embed Lua code or you're building triggers and you don't know where from where these triggers are shooting anymore when your mission becomes more complex. As a result, change management is difficult in these mission files, um, especially when you, you know, you, you you, you use a Lua framework, it has new versions, and you want to embed those new functionalities within your existing missions? Well, good luck. The scripting. Um, the DCS World a, uh, product comes with an API, which is written in Lua. Now, the API is quite deep. Um, it is low level, and for, for novice Lua uh, users, it's quite difficult to, to, to get accustomed with this API and to use it. And there are hardly any debugging facilities within uh, the existing uh, product. Um, yes, you have some env.info statements, but that's really very basic. The community uh, around DCS world um, well, there are a lot of scripts being written, but these scripts are, well, they don't really uh, accommodate a lot of reuse, and there are no standards. So, uh, various authors have written those scripts, but it's not combined into, let's say, a standard logistic set of, of capabilities. It's spread out. Grimes has done efforts to collect those uh, scripts into a central repository, which is a noble uh, effort but still I think there's something more that we could do and for this reason I started developing a couple of years ago the mission object oriented scripting environment so with the Moose framework I suggest you use the Eclipse LDT which is a standard freeware uh, professional Lua code editor that you can download and install and Moose is written in that uh, professional Lua code editor so Moose is a framework. It is written completely in Lua and it will ask you to develop your missions within Lua. So there is a learning curve involved. But all of the uh, Moose capabilities, all of the classes, all of the functions are fully documented online. The code that you write is object oriented. So that means that the code that you write, the functionality is right where your objects are. When you have an object, using IntelliSense, you can see which methods are behind and you can immediately use those methods. There are debugging facilities within Moose. Um, there are tracing functions being written that you can use to uh, see what's going on in the dcs.log file. You can switch those tracing on and you can switch them off. There, because you are developing your mission in one script file, there is no hidden code anymore your mission becomes much more clear. The workflow is embedded in one script file. And within Moose, you have finite state machines, which are workflow tools, like objects, classes, that you can use to develop your functionality. It will very much accelerate the uh, mission quality and the speed, how you can develop your missions once you get accustomed to that coding style. Change management now becomes more easy because you can search, replace um, everything in one file. Cut and paste becomes more easier, right? So when, when you use the Moose API, because there's still a learning, f um, a learning curve, but the framework uh, comes with a predefined set of example missions. You can cut and paste from those missions. You can, you can look how it works. You can uh, extract code 
uh, fragments and, and modify them to your uh, requirements. The API that Moose defines is kept as simple as possible because the power of Moose is that you can combine these objects to create missions. So basically you have simple objects that you can use combining them creating complex missions. The community behind Moose is growing. Code is shared, documented and is a standard. There are various support channels um, in the uh, in the world supporting Moose. For example, we have our Slack.com support channel, we are on Skype, there is a, a thread in the uh, Eagle Dynamics uh, forums, and the community is growing. Right now, there are a couple of multiplayer servers which are running the Moose framework, and I've received a lot of feedback from people from the online videos that were presented. Um, this is the Eclipse environment, what I'm talking about. So basically, you have here your framework uh, list here your classes and you, you develop here your missions so you can really uh, you know it's highlighted uh, the eclipse is, is is smart enough that it understands which methods are behind which objects and so on and so on and in a sequent video i will go into that in more detail a bit more on the framework itself so this is an, a small overview of what the framework comprehends so if this would be your DCS World Core Scripting API, then what you have on top of that, the first layer within the Moose framework, is I've built Moose Core classes, which basically group within a defined object or class a, a specific functionality that is core within DCS, like groups, units, airbases, a database of all the def of all the objects defined within your mission, an event handler, a scheduler finite state machines, zones of different types which work polymorphic together, points, 2D points, 3D points, send messages, manage menus, right? Now, you may find that in the DCS core scripting API, these APIs are also available, but what, these, what this core classes do, first, it simplifies the API, second, it adds on the API. There are more functionalities provided within the Moose API, so your coding becomes much more easy to do. And the second layer is the Moose wrapper classes. This one here is a hierarchical set of classes that wrap the objects that are running within your mission. So you got group objects, unit objects, client objects, static objects, airbase objects. And these objects have their methods. So you can directly, by utilizing the uh, group APIs, for example, you can directly modify the behavior of a group object within your mission. And then, on top of that, the, these two layers here are used everywhere in these three layers here um, within the Moose framework. So, you got functional classes. Functional classes are basically classes that expose methods or an API set to do a specific function, like spawning, defense from seed attacks, escort, uh, follow a plane, detect targets, uh, train a missile trainer so the missile gets exploded once it approaches your airplane. There's an airbase police that guards uh, airbases. There's a cleanup that prevents airbases from being polluted. And then you got a tasking and mission uh, section here which orchestrates uh, human players. So basically you can define logical missions within your mission design, multiple ones, and you can with this system you can um, guide human players through different tasks that are being assigned to those players uh, and these tasks have different actions within multiple missions and I have a specific video on that one that you can search on the uh, internet. The third layer in the Moose framework is the AI orchestration which basically um, provides a couple of classes or well, let's say this will grow in intensively where you can control the AI over a long-lasting process. For example, let the AI patrol in the zone, let the AI intercept intruders, let the AI pick up a cargo, let the AI deploy a cargo, and make sure that cargo, which is a specific entity within Moose, can be picked up uh, dynamically, uh, packages can be picked up dynamically, and so on and so on. This one here is for balancing the AI. So you can use this class to uh, simulate 
uh, the non-presence of players within your mission and replace them with AI behavior. So I hope uh, really that this explanation provides a better overview of what Moose is about and I really hope you enjoyed this video. But before I leave, let me um, explain you where you can find the information. So I'll just open my Explorer window here. There is a web page, flight control master.github.io slash moose. This one here. If you browse here, you will find the documentation online of the Moose framework. Everything is here. If I click on unit here, you get the unit API reference and so on and so on. Okay. There is a uh, YouTube video which you can find. Let me see here. Uh, come on. Yep. Here you go. So here you have a lot of playing lists here um, with a lot of videos that explain, for example, tasking. So if you click on this, you can watch the video what tasking is about. Yeah, and more videos will be published in the near future. Um, there are test missions. I'll show you test missions very quickly what these is, what these are. Um, here. So in these test missions, what you can see here is example uh, scripts, how you can use, for example, a, a cargo, right? So you can just cut and paste dot code, you know, watch the video, understand how it works and just start using this within your mission. I think this is really powerful too, guys. I think you should really look into this framework. A lot of people have been writing comments to me, um, for example, on the YouTube channel about the uh, framework. By the way, you can find the YouTube channel on, on these links. So here, um, and when I just browse here on the comments, you know, this one here. All right. So there are people here watching these things and they really like the stuff that they see. And I hope you will too. I hope that if you start using this um, and just read through the documentation that's written here, go through it. Um, there's also coordinates how you can find us on the slack.com and you will find a community that will help you build more compelling uh, missions. Thank you. Bye-bye.